This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review video for Sunday, May 28th, 2017. Happy Memorial Day. Good amount of stuff to cover. I'm going to briefly touch on the Fed, talk about the 10 market keys, some of the stocks and such that affect those, get into the major market indices, and then talk about some of the momentum stocks. So what better place to start than with the Fed? We had Fed minutes. I'm going to briefly reference them. If you really want to see uh, my analyses of the Fed, watch the video following this. I guess the um, YouTube live video that will have my take on the Fed. Uh, they briefly mentioned some balance sheet reductions. I thought it was fairly neutral to dovish their commentary. The balance sheet reductions are something I've been talking about. I think the market fear was that they were going to cut it off all at once, and they said that they're going to go in a gradual pace, and now that could be a tool in addition to interest rate hikes that they could use to manipulate the curve. Again, I don't want to touch too much into that. We have a Fed meeting, I think, in like seven, 16 days or so, um, and it seems as though they may be in hiking mode. We'll have to see how that plays out. There's plenty of time between now and then for that data point to change, but we've had three back-to-back -back barn burner Philly Feds. It would seem relatively appropriate for the Fed to hike interest rates. So that's that. With regard to the VIX, we're down kissing range lows into nines. I am not of the opinion that single-digit VIX is something sustainable. I will be curious to see, though, um, now that we basically have this sort of equal high here, if we're going to undercut or not with this VIX in the nines. I mean, this is, again, a little bit nuanced because look here, you had the look below and fail up. And, you know, that kind of marked a, a low in the VIX, and now we've undercut it here. So we're probably due for either some of this back and forth chop in the VIX, but I, I wouldn't put it past it for the VIX to have some type of a throwback up. Um, that's actually a little bit healthy in an environment like this, you don't really want to see a VIX that's just completely sustaining this low because that means no one has any protection on. And when the um, the big bad wolf comes and huffs and puffs on, on the door, it's not going to be the house made of bricks. It's going to be the house made of straw that can get blown right in. So I am expecting a little bit of a uh, bouncy wouncy in the VIX. The dollar... The dollar is coming into an area that I had discussed that I thought we would see some support. It's actually rallying a little bit ahead of the 61.8. Um, we had a very large day here. The low was 95.85. So there could be some more dribble down in the dollar, maybe at or below the six, um, the. 61.8, but I do think that we are due for a bit of a dollar bounce, and you can see we're getting it maybe to the 20 MA, maybe even to the breakdown point. Uh, I don't really see the dollar taking off at this point because we did have a, uh, a trend snap. There sometimes can be a throwback to the backside of the trend, which would be quaint if it coincided perfectly with the downtrend. That would be an amazing short opportunity, but I do think that there could be a little bit of bounce in the dollar and maybe that is leading into the Fed. With regard to the UUP, which is the ETF that trades the dollar, also into an important range here. We undercut the 61.8. I was actually hoping for a full down channel test, but we're now back up into it. And I could see again that potentially we held the 61.8. Maybe we bounced to the 50% FIB. Again, not seeing a, um, a change in trend in the dollar, but it is oversold. <clears throat> Excuse me. The gold. Looking a little bit better. Obviously, as the dollar's weakened, gold is priced in dollars, and we're basically back up. If this is going to stall here, this could be like a head and shoulders play. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, we're above this 12040. Uh, 50 MA here basically held. So I would say you probably could buy pullbacks to the 50 MA or stay long as long as the 50 MA holds. You have like this 250 MA confluence. 200 was resistance now. It's been supporting. 
So I don't necessarily know if I'd, I necess would need to chase here, but over Friday's high, because look at this. This is a big consolidation range. Was this a professional, you know, or a gap that gets the move going? So I think if you want to be quick on the draw, you could use a move over Friday's high, which was 120.79, as along with a below 120.33 stop for a right out, right out play. Um, I do think this area would likely be some support. We do are making now some higher lows, but we now need to see some higher highs, and you have a very prominent downtrend line at the range high. So I'm thinking that above above the Friday's high could drift a little bit higher. Below the low, we might sink back into that 5200 MA area, but that area might be one to um, to try to buy. Silver not acting as well, which is one of the reasons I'm a little bit hesitant on gold. I often find that silver, when metals are bullish, takes the lead. I do like that we have a higher low, but we have a lot of moving average confluence here. We're right back to the halfback, you know, the 50% move of this entire uh, trend. And I could see maybe this pushes up. You could see the 200 MA was a key area. It was support here. It was really where we broke down here. We spent a lot of time on either side of it. That area between the um, 150 MA confluence and maybe the 200 with the 61.8 is maybe where I'd be looking to uh, to book some silver. I was a put seller and did buy some shares down here of SLV, and I'm looking to take it off into some poppage. The real stud muffin lately have been the cryptocurrencies. Um, I'll say this. I was bullish on the cryptocurrencies, but I didn't quite count on there being this like euphoria, this mania move. Um, remember when we broke out here, I talked about getting the 1.618 Fib extension and the two times range move, and we overshot it, and I had talked about booking here. We did promptly have a pullback, but we have now gone parabolic. This is... This is what euphoria looks like in a market. Um, we didn't close on the highs or lows on Thursday. Friday, we're kind of back into range. So what's the scoop now? Where, where is this going? Um, I, this could just chop sideways for a while and work off some of this excess. But for me, if you're not booking into a move like this, I mean, you're, I think you're being a little, a little greedy. I have a lot of people I know who are, who were former gold bulls who have now become cryptocurrency um, enthusiasts, and they're talking about they're getting very philosophical and existential. And usually, when I start hearing that, I start thinking we're getting close to um, pullbacks and corrections. So I think you could use this Thursday low, this three seventy five, as your gauge. I mean, as long as you stay above that, the risk could still be higher. To retest up into here, but below 375, you, I guess you could try right or right out short for some type of a pullback, maybe to the 262s. Um, I don't have. There is nothing here for ether. Um, the Ethereum, that's sort of like the uh, street slang for Ethereum ether. Um, but that to me seems. Um, I, I don't want to discuss it because it's not on the platform. This volume is big. We're in way overbought territory here. Um, I, I would not be chasing uh, Bitcoins up here. I, I do think there is a case for it longer term, but it is definitely getting um, very extended. The bonds. So the Fed is going to be theoretically here hiking rates, but rates are going lower. The 2009 crash peak was 123.15. Um, the top of the range would roughly be the 200 MA. You have a, a downtrend there. And this, to me, would be sort of the spot to lay them out if you're interested in um, in trying a right or right out short. But if we were to get there, the interesting point would be higher lows with higher highs. So it could just be for a bit of a pullback. Um, the media will have you believe the um, and just keep in mind, this has just been a big consolidation range. This was a bit of a look above and fail. Now we're kind of just back at the top of the range. We'll have you believe that low interest rates are bad for stocks. That is hogwash. The argument that people make is that 
low interest rates mean that we're going into some type of recession or credit crisis. That isn't necessarily so. It just means that growth is sort of stunted and the Fed is still remaining accommodative. Um, Based on those minutes that I teased up earlier, they basically talked about lower for longer, and I've sort of converted that into slower for longer, meaning that they're going to slowly reduce the balance sheet. So slower for longer, lower for longer, they are basically interchangeable. Um, This is the kind of the pass, don't pass line. You kind of have a, a range here. And we haven't had a 200 MA test for a while. That, to me, would be a, a, a large potential. It's it's interesting to me that the, the probability of a Fed hike is so high, but interest rates are coming down. It, to me, says either we're missing something in terms of a larger growth slowdown, or maybe the Fed isn't um, as interested in hiking rates, so they're going to give some kind of really dovish commentary that has interest rates you know, kind of come down again. One of the reasons I don't think we're going into any type of recession anytime soon is this HYG. It's basically above the, I mean, it's making new highs off higher lows. I guess if you want to nitpick, you could say that this is a potential secure high because you have a kind of an excess move bookended by two lower highs. And I guess if you lose these lows here of this like 88.37, you could try a right or right out short, maybe for a pullback to one of the moving averages or even trend. But until we really start sustaining below the 200 MA, there's really not that much to talk about other than like specific trading conditions of bought and you know overbought or oversold in that um, in that ETF. Oil is one of the big ones. I think that. Um, What's happening in oil is is key. That's keep in mind when we had that big pullback in the HYG, it was oil related. I am filming this Sunday, so oil is trading. That's why this chart is kind of jumpy. This was the day that the Saudis um, and OPEC really said that they're going to keep the production cuts but not extend them. And you had this really large pullback in oil that one day it was like a five percent move the next day you kind of went below but then closed back up above the consolidation range is 49.61 so you had a weekly close above the 50 and the 200 ma and basically right at the 10 and see sunday night we're kind of just chopping above there as long as you hold the 200 ma this could have been a big look below and fail and this may want to come back up i think this washed out a lot of weak hands who had been chasing the the dragon, hoping for a move up, and you know we're now back up into range. If this were the case, if oil were to be listen, this could have just been a pin job. Keep that in mind. You know, it was a, a, a week a weekend. Maybe people wanted to book profits off this short, but I'm watching this 49.61 ish area. 49, basically the 49 strike. As long as 49 holds, the risk is up. Below there, the risk then comes down to like 47s and maybe even some kind of a, an attempt at a retest of the recent low. But 49s are the key. I like long above 49s or short below, and I'm probably not going to be changing my view on that. One thing that does have me a little bit cautious on um, oil is this XLE. Um, this is still in a pretty pronounced downtrend. This did try to have a bit of a hammer at a higher low here. Uh, there are some big fibs coming up. Um, a little bit lower, I mean, almost 10% lower for the 61.8. Um, the 50 MA here was is sort of the key. Uh, you can see that's what stalled it up here. As long as we're below the 50 MA, there's really not all that much to be bullish in. But I will say this, you have a range low basically coming in around 63s. So even if the move is down, it might not be that much down. And you have, I would love to be have the opportunity to buy this on some type of a flush down to the gap fill in the 61.8. I think at that point, given that this was such a controlled kind of move, it would be interesting to me down into this level. So I either like it long back up above the 50 MA or maybe trying to start picking at it down near these reference lows somewhere in the 64s or um, what I would probably do down here is start selling these out of the money puts in the in the 60s, maybe a little longer dated to kind of build a bit of a longer dated position. Um, Exxon has also 
not been acting super de duper well. Um, you've had a lot of you've had oil make lower lows, but Exxon has basically just been building this base. Again, if there was some kind of a flush, you have a channel low and a measured move and a 61.8, all basically down in this in this range in these like 77s. So. I had taken some opportunities, and in, in, uh, believe it or not, I've been playing Exxon from the long side via short puts and, and pretty much have been successful on every trade. Some of them I've had to roll and then roll or whatever and been successful on those, but on the on balance, they, it's been a successful strategy, so I guess I'll just stick with it. Um, again, you need to clear these highs here for this to really kind of take off. But I'm thinking that the yield support and kind of getting close to these fibs, the 50% fib is key. If you start losing these lows, it'll probably have a little bit more of a washout. But again, I'd be looking to sell out of the money puts into that move. It might take a little time because you have this kind of, it would be a failed base. And I would say that you could probably almost double up that range from the failed base um, using 84.25 as the high and 80, um, 30 is the low, so um, maybe you know you do have a bit of a washout into the more mid 70s. But again, that's gonna be that's gonna be down into measured move territory, 61.8 territory, higher yield territory, and the trend for oil prices now should be with some support because you're coming into the summer driving season. So seasonally, this is like a good time for the commodity. So I, I, I don't know how much longer the, the commodity will be under pressure. Hope that makes some sense. So let's get into China maybe quickly. We could talk a little China. Oddly, we are doing better. I, I shouldn't say oddly. I've been saying that I thought it was a little bit bullish. Um, you have a couple of days up here. I've seen these moves before, and then there's a pullback. So I don't necessarily think this is going to completely get away from you because look where this breakdown point was in this reference high. So it seems like there might be, this could push up a little bit more, maybe to 42s, which would be the backside of this old up channel. But I should really gray that out. It's not really as, um, I, I don't even know if it's, going to be still so relevant, but we are um, looking better. Basically double bottoms, now higher highs. So I would say as long as you um, have a pullback, I think 50 MA could be used as a pullback point or always 200 MA, but I would, I'd would i be a put seller at a, at, a, at a 50 MA pullback. And it seems to me that, um, again, I'd like to see a little sideways action considering this was sort of a big breakdown point. We've didn't quite get there here. We didn't quite get there here, but it's kind of close enough, and I, I like the idea that we're um, we're consolidating. So I think you can kind of buy some dips in FXI, but wait for the dips. I don't think you really need the chase. Um, one of the things I've been liking about China is the way some of the bigger stocks have been acting. Baidu, look, it had this failed breakout. It held mid-range. This really, in all sense of the word, should have seen the channel low, but it held the moving averages, came back up, look above and fail a little, back off to a higher low, a retest of the backside of the old downtrend line, and now back up at it. So this to me looks like it may want to start going a little bit higher. Um, as long as it's above 88.54, the 10 MA, and kind of the 20 MA, that's really where this caught it. I, I think it's okay. I mean, you probably could sell some near-dated puts on pullbacks, probably below, maybe at the channel low or near these this moving average confluence, if there you know if there's any juice right now. There's there's not a ton because of the the market, but I'm talking about some kind of overall market you know pullback. These highs are a little bit poor. There could be some kind of a liquidation break to trend, but again, I'm I would be a buyer now on that trend because it spent too much time up here. It, it probably shouldn't fail. Does that mean that it it can't fail? It's impossible. No. But it seems to me like it, it's getting stronger. There are, are buyers at higher levels. The BABA got my 1.618 Fibonacci extension. The channel high is a little bit higher, and the two times range is a little higher still. Could this just like meander on up? Very possible. You can see the 10-day MA has been holding. If you lose the 10-day, I think there's a quick right or right out short to the 20 MA. Um, 
but that has been holding. So as long as this kind of holds the 20 MA, it's it's okay. Below there, it gets a little iffy, maybe for a 50 MA touch. Um, I had talked about booking profits here. I'm still in, inclined to that. And if you're in here and you need a near right or right out stop, 121.95 for right or right out long or right or right out short. So keeping you could stay long with that as long as you hold there and maybe use a quick stop below there. The biotechs are kind of just chopping around. We're making some lower highs here. We're a little bit below the um, 100 MA. I'd probably be a buyer down near these reference lows and the channel low near the 200 MA for a bounce play. Um, I, I, just again, you could either buy stop it up over the 50 MA here, which has been kind of the resistance and it's also the channel high, or maybe sell some out of the money puts on a breakdown closer to the 200 MA, you know, maybe like 171s or below. But this has now been one, two, three, four, five, six, almost six tests up here. I mean, it, it just seems like, I guess we're in a big range, but at some point this does look like it may want to um, to go a bit higher. Uh, 200 MA, again, would be, for me, the row, row play, considering we lost the 100. Losing 100s usually see 200s. So that, to me, would be a, a place to do maybe same week put spreads or put ratios, like buying these and selling one or you know two times out of the money, whatever you can get on for as close to a credit as possible. IYT, the trannies, the transports. So this is interesting. Uh, we stopped just short of the 200. We had the check back, but now we're back above the 100 MA, back above the 50 MA, and broke the downtrend line. And we're in very near danger of canceling the head and shoulders pattern. This is, um, you could just, you could make the argument that this whole thing is a big uh, right shoulder. But look at this. Look where all the failures were at the 100 MA, right? A gap above it didn't hold. We got below it. The failure here. Now we're above the 100 MA. So if you want a row, row play, I guess you could be long right over the 100 with a stop below it or a short right below it. If we were to take out this high, this 167.77, I think we will retest the old all-time high. Um, I mean, as far as a head and shoulders play goes, this is sort of textbook, right? I mean, you have a a higher than a higher left shoulder than a right shoulder and you have you know a failure at the channel high you have a, a, a basically mean you have a slouching right shoulder those are sometimes the more frustrating ones to get the follow through in because it has to go so much lower but usually they're the higher probability ones so just keep an eye on this like you know 50 and 100 ma if if you lose the 100 you might get a quicker retest of the 50 but this to me looks like it's maybe trying to improve and keep an eye if this this shoulder fails you're going to see another leg higher likely in the market so that's a very key area copper dr copper as they often call it this is again just a big flag right we never even got the retest here of the range low 50 ma is basically what's been holding it with 100 ma right above um, I guess wait until you clear those if you want for the long or wait until the range low. I mean, that's my take on it. But again, copper not falling apart doesn't have me exactly thinking recession. Another key for the market to kind of continue higher are the financial stocks. Um, this has been kind of ground zero of the, like the deregulation trade. I know everyone's been hopped up on this for interest rate hikes, but I, I'm more of a deregulation guy. That's why I think this kind of really rallied. Um, let me zoom zoom in a little bit better, if I if I may. A um, couple of things to note. One is you have these kind of double tops with a lower high here, and a 50 MA was the support, and now it has become the resistance. And Friday, we actually closed a smidgen above the 50 MA. So you have a 10 MA right below, which has been support on like the kind of the pullback. So as long as that holds, if you want to try right or right out, God bless you, give it a whirl. Um, if you want to try short, let me just see here. Um, yeah, this is the trend that I kind of like now. Let's do that. 
in Yeller. Yeller. I really want to see the 50 MA hold. If you can get above the like the two-day range, I think this could continue to float up a little higher. Keep in mind there's a gap fill basically at the at the 100 MA, and this is really the range high. Like you have a range low, moves above this have been unsustainable because that's the range high. So you need to see it hold. The healthiest thing I could see happening here is a pullback to a still higher low and then go. That to me would be much better of a case than the bulls than coming up from the range low, taking out the high, and then trying to play for a breakout with at least some consolidation or a pullback to a higher low and then go. So that's going to be the key for me, this kind of like 50, 100 MA area, 100 being very key for higher. Keep in mind when we talk XLF, the stocks all look the same like jp morgan you basically got a perfect retest here it's not really as strong right jpm is a big one we're not above the 50 ma that's been where it's stalled so i'm a little iffy on that xlf without jpm confirming so just keep that in mind this is the keys to the kingdom in my view here you can see i even wrote that out this, if you can get above 89.13, that will open the floodgates for the financial trade being back on because that will have fully negated the inverse head and shoulders. Goldman Sachs, uh, double bottom, just below the 50 MA. Again, these are the two bag, big bad boys in the XLF, and they're still below their 50 MAs. This, in my view, would need to clear 234.63. Again, the 100 MA. Keep in mind, I talked about that hundo in the XLF. At the very least, get above the 50. If you get above the 50, I think you would see the 100. This could be a good right or right out short area. But if you can clear that and hold it, then we could be back off to the races. Those are the very key mm -hmm. levels. If this loses the double bottom, I don't think this 200 MA is going to hold it, and I think you could see a move to one of the FIBs, the 50%, potentially even the 61.8 to rene renegate the entire move, and this area to me would be a screaming buy, by the way. Um, was there any? Oh, one, one financial I do like is this Blackstone. I'll show you why. They had something come out where I th think they're going to get some advantageous stuff out of the Trump, basically out of the Trump administration. Um, this is a gap above range. It went, it's consolidating. You can see when we've had gaps above range before, there's been pullbacks and then continuation. The pullback to me would be basically to the range low here, um, like thir these 31s, and then maybe you get the extension. But this to me looks a little bit bullish. So Blackstone looks okay to me. Um, that's kind of a, a good fin that I like if you're looking for something in the financial space. Let's talk stock market. Um, the expected move in SPY this week isn't all that ginormous, but $1.90, basically up to two forty three sixty one, or down to um, two. Oh, I didn't calculate that correctly. Um, I don't want to screw around with it here. Um, no, no, actually, none of these are. No. No, none of these are correct. Um, I, but the absolute move is correct. One dollar and ninety cents. I don't know what I was doing with that. I think I was looking at a different uh, ETF. So yeah, basically a little under two dollar move. Um, so let's talk, shall we? We have a higher lows. One, two, three. Basically a look below and fail of the 50 MA. Now back up to all time highs with a breakout. Um, we are kind of stalling a little bit on a channel high. Um, I don't know if I lo love how I drew that channel, and so why don't we redraw the channel? Um, so I do like it. Let's see. You could take that low. You could draw in this high. Oh, did we have the right low in? No. Um, 232.51. Let's see. Yeah, that's correct. Let's redraw as a channel could use this peak if we can get it to snap. And you can see we stopped basically right at it. All righty. So you have multiple days up now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and basically consolidation. 
So this may be due for a little bit of a pullback. I do think the 10-day 20MA confluence would be the, that spot where we could pull back to. Um, we have broken out of the range, this consolidation range, and that would put new upside targets potentially in play. Uh, 1.618 Fib of the range is 245s, and 249s are the two times range up higher, assuming this holds, this 240.32. So as long as you hold above 240.32, the risk is now again higher. Um, and we now are at a new all-time high, so people will be back into buy the dip mode. The problem I have is that we often have like these incremental highs, break back into range, come up, and then kind of go, and they don't make it easy. So I, I'm very leery of chasing breakouts on this tape and what the hell did I just do? So I think a pullback to this 20, 10 day MA confluence to me would be a buy the dip or a near dated out of the money put sale. But let's just keep it simple. As long as we're above this area, it's okay. Below it, a little more iffy. I did a poll um, this week, which again, always has me a little on guard when I see numbers like this. 43% of people were bullish, 27% of people were neutral to bullish, so that's 70%. 12% of people were bearish, and 18% and of people were neutral to bearish, and that's 30%. When, the last time I did a poll where we were near 70% bullish in any way, shape, or form, it was followed by some type of a little pullback, so sentiment is improving. Just be a little cautious. Low-end range of VIX low low bearish sentiment gets me a little bit iffy. Um, one of the things I think also we're gonna when we get to the Momo stocks, uh, some of them are a little extended and we'll talk about that in a minute. IWM also has been I don't know if I would say a harbinger for things, but you can see we had the gap fill and it's down and it's basically just fighting to hold the 50 and 100 MA. We're nowhere near the all-time high here. So I need to see the, the small caps participate a little bit. You have not had a really, this almost is just like almost like a mini secure high. I need to see to get on board. I want to see like this break, this sort of triangle, triangular formation. So I'd like to see some small cap follow through. The expected move this week is $1.75. Um, so... You could, I think, probably buy stop up over 138.61. Um, how far would this maybe pull back? I mean, maybe you'd get this gap fill, the 136s. But as long as it holds the 50 and 100 MA, it's sort of like, okay. You can see the gap down here. As long as you're above this bar, 137.04, it's okay. If you start accepting price, you can see you've had cattails into there that have rejected. If you start accepting into 137.04s, Below there, I think you can get a right or right out short off for a, for a good trade. The Qs, it's very hard to be bullish when you have the Qs acting like this, making new highs all the time. I mean, look at this gap down. It, I mean, we're way, we're at new all time highs. It's uh, 50 MA has been holding. So pull back to the 50 MA will remain buys. Uh, until they are not, and these fibs are no longer really um, relevant. We can kind of get rid of those. Maybe I'll just adjust them to the, ne the next video, but 50 MA, this like 20, 10 MA confluence uh, can't be too bearish as long as we're above that, and we could even probably adjust this channel again. I don't even love how that channel is drawn in anymore. Um, we could use this low, I think. I think this would be a good one. Uh, the low was 118.14. People always ask me to kind of show how I draw this stuff in, so I'm trying to do a little bit more of that with you guys and gals here and there. Redraw as a channel. If we use these highs, yeah, you can see we're getting kind of up to it, so there might be a little bit more, but wouldn't surprise me for some sideways pull maybe a little pullback to $1.42 or $1.43 is the expected move this week. One thing with regard to the um, ES, um, Thursday we had a bit of a 
a little bit of an excess high here, you can see, um, and then a late day sell off. So I don't make too much of this, but there is a few texts of excess. I don't know if it's going to be a auction ending, but you know, it's uh, it's a little bit there. These are the Sunday night futures. They were up, pulled back a bit. It would be great for the bulls if you could take this out in the overnight because markets don't tend to end non-regular trading hours. Like this was regular trading hours. If this was eclipsed sometime between tonight and tomorrow's futures or whatever, I would think that the market probably has a little bit more to go, even if the initial move is down. The aforementioned momentum stocks. Apple not making new highs with the NASDAQ. A little cautionary, but nothing to write home about just yet. A big emotional bar day. I love those as a gauge in Apple. We're kind of meandering near the top of that. Anything over 154.57 is a long. Below 149.71 is a right or right out short, probably for the 50 MA and trend line touch. 20 MA, of course, being a immediate gauge of health. And like, if you don't want to wait for this whole bar, you could use the 20 MA as a gauge, either long right or right out against the 20 MA or short right or right out against the 20 MA. And then I'd be like, like adding to the position. So let's say the move is down. You break the 20 MA, you could short and then add below there for the move down to here where you'd be looking to cover it up, at least some of it. Above here, you could just add up, but you know, by above 154.57, I think it would probably float up, and you could add again over like one, yeah, 154.90s. You really need 155s to hold an apple, and then I think if that were to take place, you could see the 1.618 at 162.39, and then at that point, I'd probably be um, booking it. Earnings coming up on 725. If we get a big down move into that, it could set up for our shake and bake right or right out long. If we're up big into that, I would be booking profits. This isn't historically an amazing quarter for Apple. No, it is not. Amazon. All right, so this is, I've mentioned a few weeks ago, this is every once in a while, a couple of summers ago, it was Priceline. I think some, a couple of, maybe last summer, I'd have to look. Google was one of them. And this summer, it is Amazon. Um, this thing is a, is a beast. There's no other ways to describe it. You had a range. You had a 1.618 FIB extension. It's just kind of um, play, it played around there for a little while. Now you got the two times range, and you're up close to the 1,000 in all I mean, listen, 999, like Herman Cain's plan, that was may be good enough in my view. You can pull back as much as 965. Even I could even make the argument to 954.40 and still be bullish. That's where the 20 MA is, by the way, mind you. So any pullback into there, I think you could try right or right out long. I do think that this will need to, or I'd probably do it via out-of-the-money put sales. Um, remember I talked about this professional gap here? It took a while to play out, but it, the move was up. This is where we got back into Amazon, remember? Um, via put sales. It took some time. Looked a little iffy, but it uh, you never leave your wingman, right? So, uh, yeah, I think it's an all right idea to book a little bit of profits here. I am still a buyer on dips. The trend is your friend, and any pullback to the trend should be bought until it fails. 50 MA, any pullback to that is again a buy. It's been the uh, was the, the resistance, now the support. And there are plenty of people who missed Amazon that are dying to buy this. This could just completely go parabolic, but it's a little harder trade location close to 1,000. I don't know if the 1,000 is going to hold it. It could overshoot very easily. If you're long and you're worried, you could use this 989 quarter for some position, like to a little bit of stop out there. Above the two-day high, I think we'll push through and probably way overshoot the 1,000. Once the 1,000 clears, I don't know, maybe you see 1,100. But Amazon is a buy-the-dip stock. As long as this makes higher highs with higher lows and then still higher highs, it's a buy-the-dip 
situation. Um, if it makes lower highs, it gets iffy. Like, look here. You had the down move, the rally to the lower high, and then the collapse vu. So before you're going to get the collapse vu, which I'm coining here, you're going to need to see a pullback, a, a throw to a lower high, and then a pullback. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're particularly if you're trying to pull, you know, uh, you know, a Houdini out of your hat, a rabbit out of your hat, and short the top, I would wait for the lower high from a on a separate leg. Facebook. This is starting to look kind of bullish again, right? Um, you got the the basically my. This on some charts for some reason show almost exact touches. You got the two, you got the 61.8, you got the two times range, and you got my progression lines, and this thing pulled back pretty aggressively, not even quite to the 50 MA, and now you're back up to the progression line. Um, if this just goes sideways for a while, I think it would could potentially go high. We'll have to see if there's a double top in place, but according to my dope, this should be weaker than it is, so it's looking a little bit better. If you want to write a right outplay for a day trade, just buy stop up above these two-day highs, and you should get a move. Uh, if you want to write a right out short play, I think you could use Friday's low, maybe, um, or this low here, the 149.95. That's also the 20 MA, and it shouldn't be below that. If it is, uh, you probably get a rollback. So that's some row row setups for you boys and girls in the Facebook. Google also monstrous. Uh, above the channel, way up there. Um, look at this. This is was the old kind of like progression line. If there is, and there will be, I don't know when it will be, but there will be some kind of a pullback at one point in Google. The first touch of this, wherever that may be, will be a right or right out buy, particularly if it's at this range low. I think you'll have a ton of people who are afraid the gap's going to fill and it won't fill right away. So... If there was a pullback into here, I'd probably be selling out of the money puts at wherever at below the gap fill. I think that that for at least near dated like same week would work. That being said, we're basically at a thousand. Will there be thousand sellers? I mean, who knows? When th things sometimes when they have momentum like in Bitcoin take on a life of their own. Uh, it is extended. I would be buying a pullback for the for the foreseeable future. Um, I don't think I'd be chasing, though, up like this. Uh, you can see you had a look back into the channel and break. I, th I don't know if I would count this as the first touch of the channel because often you do get a pullback and then there's a, a rally to a lower high and then it kind of pulls back. So I think you could probably buy the backside of the channel on pullbacks and for the very first time for a Roro trade. Netflix also... Nearing the end of the line for this cowboy and my upward price targets. I have a big 1.618 and different measure moves were close. So it could it could go a bit higher. I think you could use Friday's range for a day trade above the high. Probably goes a little higher below the low um, and maybe it fills the gap. So that two-day range is key. Long above, short below. Keep it simple, stupid. Tesla. Now... I want to talk about the anatomy of tape reading for a moment, if you don't mind, because keep in mind, we discussed a long on the, I discuss when I say we, I just, just assume I mean me, it's the royal we. Um, look at this. You had a um, double top for the most part with a slightly lower high and a pullback, and you have a higher low here. Um, equal low. And once you took out this high um, and the downtrend, this really got strong, right? And then Friday, we came up basically to the range high. So you have double tops in a heavily shorted stock with a higher low now. Where do you think all the stops are, are hiding out for people who are short above the all-time high? I'll be very surprised if this high doesn't get run um, if it happens on a gap fashion, you could have like one of those gap and go days or like it'll maybe it's like a gap and hold and then the next day is the realization it's not coming back. But I'm bullish in Tesla for the for now and I, I do think that this is gonna kind of uh, push up to some new highs at the at this at this juncture. 
I'd be surprised. Maybe there's some kind of broad market sell-off that does kind of take it down. It's this and could always wake up to like some kind of crazy gap down on Monday. You never know. I mean Tuesday. But I will say this: what got me bullish on this day in particular? I, I'm fairly well versed at reading the tape at this point in my illustrious career. I um, have been trading for a long time, sometimes longer than I care to admit. It's pretty crazy. Um, this was Thursday's close. Now, the market pulled back into the close, but Tesla did not. It kept on going to the high. That, to me, usually screams higher gap up the next day. You did get it. There was some momentary pullback, but look, this thing was pretty um, pretty strong. I am thinking Tesla, my favorite play in this, honestly, would be for this to now like chop sideways and then go. Because you came up, you know, a lot. I'd love to see this kind of like go for a few days sideways and then kind of whamorific through. Um, if this were to lose this low of day, this 316.31, then... I don't know, triple top or whatever. There could be some kind of a rollback maybe to the 50 MA. But this, to me, looks looks a little bullish. NVIDIA. Uh, this is getting some of my... This was one I was also bullish in. Uh, remember when I said this on earnings was the better play was to play for follow-through after the print? And someone asked me, so what now on NVIDIA? And I said it didn't go down on earnings, so it's going to go higher. It, it did. It, it played out to the, exactly. Um, this was the way to do it. Now we're at 1.618 fibs. We're getting close to two times ranges. Uh, I'd say the easy chase here was is over. Um, if you want to now where to stop out on this, 135.22. You don't really want to get much below there. I, I would even use Friday's low if you're really um, new to the trade because this does have a little bit of excess but i do think nvidia there are enough people that miss this and if there's any pullback to the 120 121s uh, i think this area would be an area to sell out of the money puts again that's going to be like the breakout area the retest and i don't think this is going to fill the gap right away i think if you came down there you'd have a lot of people who think it's going to fill the gap but it won't and you could sell out of the money puts at the trend line which is kind of at the gap so even if it does it's it's still okay. It's kind of like pizza, right? Um, even if it's not so good, it is good. So uh, a little late to chase NVIDIA, but I do think you could sell puts on pullbacks. Now, Priceline was one I don't think I got correct here. I didn't trade it, so I didn't lose any money on it, thank goodness. But look at this. Um, rolled over here, made a new low, but you did hold the 50 MA. Um, I think I was saying I did, I think here last week I was saying I was expecting some kind of re rollover. We did get it, but there wasn't follow through and 50 MA held and it's now back up. So price line will remain along as till, as long as the 50 MA holds, um, Expedia, same sort of business. This sort of has a double top. You have a two, basically two days of equal range long above. Short below, keep it simple, stupid, keep it simple, stupid. One of the best lines of all time. Deckers. Um, oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, so this has the potential of a professional Gaparuski McFaddy. Um, the problem is, is that there is some reference area here with people who probably want to get their money back in a reference high. So I don't know if you need to necessarily chase this immediately. Uh, you had a X, kind of a topping tail here, a hold of the backside of the downtrend and the 100 MA, which was bullish. Um, I was really torn on Deckers on if this was going to be up or not. There was a, a heck of a lot of put sales. Uh, I'm sorry, buys on this, and I, I thought that I would either be interested in buying it lower or in a situation where it goes up. So now I need to see it hold the gap for at least like two, three days. So let's see if it holds, and then like if the best scenario here would be a couple of days sideways, then take the high and it can continue on. 
Um, or if it at least holds for a few days, you could sell some out of the money puts down somewhere into this area. So that's my thoughts on Deckers, but it, the pattern does look good, but we have to make sure it's not some kind of one day wonder. PayPal, one I've been bullish on for a very, very long time. We got the 1.618, we got the two times range, we got the channel high, book some profits, por favor. Still one of my favorite stocks, but I'd like to buy it on a dip, maybe even to the 50 MA. Um, I don't know that it's gonna go there, this could just keep going in the kind of market that we're in, but at the very least, book a little bit of profitos. If you wanna use a trend, use this one as a write, a write out type of a situation, you know? Nah, I mean could buy something down in here. But I definitely like the idea of booking a little bit of profits in PayPal. It's run a lot. Still one of my fav faves, though. Uh, Camping World, one I haven't really been following that regularly, but for the first time, I got an alert on Friday. We're down into this range low, the 61.8, and this has a potential head and shoulders. If that were to fully articulate lower, that would basically be to the IPO range and the 78.6 down 23.91. So somewhere in between here, um, if above Friday's high, this could be the low and there's a bounce or down into here. But I do like selling the out of the money puts into weakness from mm. now on. I've been, was bullish, then I kind of flipped um, and now I'm not as bearish as I was. I'm starting to get a little interested into some of these levels, at least for somewhat of a bounce. I don't love that this now made a lower low, but we are into a reference area. You could use Friday's low as a reference point. If you lose that, the 78.6 area to me would be the would be the spot. Ulta Salons. Oh my my gosh. Um, I had been bullish on this years ago. I, I, I bailed on this way too early, but whatever. Um, you have a big range here. Pulled back, held the 100, gapped up. The 1.618 FIB extension and the two times ranges are above. Again, the same situation. Need to see it clear the earnings gap high of day of 310. If it does, I do think it will go higher, probably the two times range, because the 1.618 is too close. Um, below here, probably fills the gap and could even come down low, like maybe even the 200 MA. Um, the 100 held, if, if this just completely collapses, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, are all down, um, this area will get retested. So I think you could use Friday's range as a gauge. Uh, long above, short below, keep it simple. By popular request, I was asked to talk about Shake Shack. Um, this was the old all-time low, 38.64. You have a very defined range in the shack arama ding dong. Anytime this gets close to the 30, 31, I sell out of the money puts. It has worked for a long time, the years actually. Uh, now we're getting close to the upper end of the range. I guess this could see 42s. Um, this is a very heavily shorted stock, but uh, wh what I liked about their earnings, uh, if you recall, as I said, they reaffirmed their guidance um, for the year, so I don't think there's as much risk. Any pullback, if you want to be long this, do it the chicken little way. Sell puts out of the money below this like 50, 100, and 200 MA confluence. That area should probably hold on a pullback now. So um, remember, the, this was the earnings, and then you had this, um, this had been down after earnings, but then had a gap and go um, above the... Um, above the trend. So we're now getting close to the um, area. I'd be looking to kind of sell it into like the 42 area um, and then buy it down or sell it again now out of the money puts or at the money puts if it could get into that confluence. So I'm either looking to take profits up here or add or buy down here. Micron. Uh, this was another one that I was asked about. Um, wow, this rebounded a lot. Uh, you have basically a kind of a 2x high. 50 MA has been holding. So as long as the 50 MA holds, I guess you could buy dips on the 50 MA or stay long with it as long as the 50 MA holds. And then if it breaks, you could either be out, stopped out, or try short. Uh, that's my weekend video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up and a comment. If you didn't like it, um, I'm sorry. Try, uh, try another one. 
Uh, if you do did like this, though, the best way to say thank you is to retweet it on Twitter. So please do so. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll be doing my next video um, probably Wednesday or Thursday. This is a sh holiday shortened week, so more likely Thursday than Wednesday. Have a great rest of your weekend and cheers.